Hi, everyone. Welcome. We're going to get started here shortly. We're so glad to have you with us today. So settle in, grab your coffee, your water. We'll get started in about one minute or so. Welcome everyone. We'll get started shortly. We're glad you're here. We have a lot of people joining us today, so we're just getting everyone settled in and we will get started shortly. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here. We will get started shortly. Do want to give you a reminder that there is a sketch that's being offered today in college preparation and for the live and the recording of this webinar. Details will be provided to you in the chat and at the conclusion of the webinar. We are so glad you're here. Welcome. Okay. A warm welcome to all of you. Thank you for being here. We are going to get started. We are excited for this great information. I'm going to kick it off to our executive director, Ryan. Thank you, Janine. Good afternoon, friends. I'm Ryan Fewens Bliss, executive director at Michigan College Access Network. We are so thrilled to have you join us today to talk about what we think is a really, really exciting and powerful new tool to get kids into college. We know you care about that. We certainly care about that at MCAN as well. MCAN is proud to host today's session, along with some of our friends that you know as well, Michigan Association of Secondary School Principals, Michigan Association of Superintendents and Administrators, Michigan Association of College Admissions Counselors, and the Michigan Department of Treasury's Office of Post-Secondary Financial Planning. To get us started, I am extremely honored to introduce our welcome speaker. Leading a diverse and prosperous state, as you can imagine, and is a difficult job in normal times, but leading a state through unprecedented crisis is even harder. Our governor has shown her medal and was just rewarded for those efforts by the citizens of Michigan with an additional term in office. She continues to lead our state with vision, grace, and a wardrobe of kick-ass leather jackets that would make Rizzo from Greece jealous. The leadership and impact is particularly felt in our field of college access and success. In 2019, the governor set the first statewide post-secondary education attainment goal, that's 60 by 30, which was later adopted by the full legislature. During the pandemic, she formed Futures for Frontliners, offering a tuition-free pathway to a certificate or a degree for those that risk their lives so the rest of us could be safe. Building on that momentum, she launched Michigan Reconnect, an incredible increase to the state's efforts to provide adults with post-secondary education, resulting in more than 100,000 successful applicants so far. In each budget cycle, she's been able to dramatically increase the K-12 foundation allowance and institutional appropriations for our world-class colleges, while also investing in innovative programs. And most recently, with partnership from Senators Lasada and Stamis, she signed into law what we are here to talk about today, the Michigan Achievement Scholarship. The largest increase in state-based financial aid, surely in my lifetime, perhaps ever in our state. I can't wait to see what she does in her next four years to move us towards 60 by 30. In fact, Governor, if you want to make any big announcements today before your State of the State address this week, I'm sure we can all keep it a secret. It's my pleasure to introduce a fierce champion of education, Michigan's 49th governor, Gretchen Whitmer. Take it over, Governor. Thanks, Ryan. And I'm so glad to be here with all of you. I appreciate the work that is happening all across the state. And it's an honor to be in a position to support your work. And yes, I am wearing a leather jacket, Ryan. So I guess you do know what you're talking about. Uh, I want to thank all of our partners who put 
today's seminar on the Michigan College Access Network, associations of secondary school principals, superintendents and administrators, and college admission counseling. I am thrilled to see so many educators, from counselors to administrators to superintendents and principals. You are on the front line stepping up every day for our kids and teaching them important lessons, helping them set long-term goals, keeping them safe, putting on athletic programs, like extracurriculars and so much more. And I can tell you when I was a student, I was successful because of the support and mentorship and patience, lots of patience of educators like you. Um, so thank you for your hard work. Education, as we all know, is the key to building a brighter future for our state, a stronger economy for our state. According to Michigan College Action Network, Access Network, over 70% of jobs paying the median wage require formal education after high school. But we know too many Michiganers struggle with the high education costs. They're wondering if and when or how they can go to college. Many are working multiple jobs while juggling coursework to avoid going into debt. And for, unfortunately, we've got too many students who are just simply food insecure. And that's why last year I signed bipartisan legislation to establish the Michigan Achievement Scholarship and lower the costs of college by thousands for most of our students. Starting with the class of 2023, students who are making their college decisions right now, graduates can receive annual scholarships up to $2,750 for community college, $4,000 for private college, and $5,500 at a public university. They can renew for three years at a community college and five years um, at a private or public college, totaling between 82, so $8,250 and up to $27,500. The scholarships cover four out of every five college students in Michigan. And according to MCAN, 65% of graduating students can get a higher education tuition free. That is a BFD also known as a Bachelor of Fine Deal. <laughs> we made that up. Anyway, uh, this is where you come in. We need you to spread the word about the Michigan Achievement Scholarship and help students sign up. In every school, there are students right now who need to know about the scholarship. They're wondering whether they can afford to follow their dreams or haven't considered college because of the cost. They're waiting to build their future, but they need some help and some guidance and need to know that the opportunity is real and it's there. So let's work together to ensure every student completes the FAFSA. Uh, there's no extra application for the Michigan Achievement Scholarship. And I wanna encourage people to visit michigan.gov backslash MI student aid for more information. If we get this done, or I should say when we get this done, we can lower the cost of college for the majority of students in Michigan. I mean, it's an incredible opportunity. So I thank you for your partnership and I'm looking forward to working with you to help make sure that more Michiganders can achieve their goals. And I thank you all for everything you're doing toward this end and for being such great partners to me and my administration. Thanks so much, Governor. We feel your passion for this issue, your leadership. We're really excited about what's to come for 60 by 30. We really appreciate your time today. And I wanna thank you, uh, I wanna thank your team who has been great to work with on the Michigan Achievement Scholarship. That includes Michelle Richard, Robin Lott, Beth Bullion, and Sarah Jerpicki. They're a great reflection of your commitment uh, to students and families. So you've got a great team working for you. Thanks, Thank Governor. you, thanks Ryan, bye everyone. There are many great things I'm thankful for as the executive director of MCAN. One of those things that I love is that I am surrounded by incredibly talented and inspiring women like the governor that I learn from every day. I'm joined in hosting today's webinar by several of those women, including Wendy Zdeb, president of the Michigan Association for Secondary, excuse me, of Secondary School Principals, Sarah Gammons, president of the Michigan Association for College Admissions Counselors, Tina Kerr, president of the Michigan Association of Superintendents and Administrators, and Robin Lott, director of the Department, Michigan Department of Treasury's Office of Post-Secondary Financial Planning. Uh, they and their staff are critical partners of MCAN, and I know they're helpful to all of you in your daily work as well. I'm gonna hand it over to one of those amazing women, my friend Wendy Zdeb from MESSP. Take it away, Wendy. Thank you to Governor Whitmer and to MCAN for prioritizing students by helping to find the funding for the Michigan Achievement Scholarship. Many school administrators still lament the fact that we lost funding for the old Michigan Merit Scholarship. 
Many students at high performing schools received that scholarship as it was based on the Michigan Merit Exam qualifying score. As you will learn during this webinar, the parameters of the Michigan Achievement Scholarship are different. Students must complete the FAFSA to be eligible and have a determination of an expected family contribution of less than $25,000 toward college. Some here may think, oh, not many of our families are going to qualify. But when we run the numbers on Michigan students who completed the FAFSA in 2022, we see that 80% would have qualified, making it likely that the Michigan Achievement Scholarship will positively impact even more students than the Michigan Merit Scholarship did. The critical piece will be increasing our FAFSA completion rates statewide. High schools cannot just offer one financial aid night that they have always done and reach all the families that they need to impact. I would like to encourage all superintendents, high school principals, and counselors to work collaboratively to offer multiple options for assisting families in small groups and one-on-one -on -one to get the FAFSA paperwork completed. It will also require a bit of a marketing and awareness campaign. Anytime we have a new opportunity in schools, we have to put extra effort into making our communications spot on. MASSP is committed to partnering with MCAN, MASA, and the School Counselor Associations to continue to share information and offer supports and resources to help make the Michigan Achievement Scholarship a big win for Michigan students statewide. Thanks again, Ryan, for this opportunity. Thank you, Wendy. Sarah. Hi, and thank you, MCAN, um, for having MACAC um, on this uh, presentation today. And thank you to the governor. Uh, we were thrilled when we saw that scholarship come through. Um, it's really a game changer. Uh, and for those who might not know, Michigan um, Association of College Admissions Counseling is an organization made up of both sides of the table, as we say in the, in the college admissions game. Um, so we've got high school counselors, private independent counselors who are working with students um, on one side of the table, and then college admissions counselors, um, IB or um, community-based organizations who are also helping. So all of those interested in that transition of a student from secondary to post-secondary are in our organization. And, um, and we fully embrace the 60 by 30, understanding that uh, it's really about the economy. As, as the governor actually mentioned, it's about the student's economy, it's about the family's economy, it's about the state economy in meeting that 60 by 30. And um, the new scholarship, the Michigan Achievement Scholarship, goes a long way in opening the doors to students who may not have thought it was a possibility. And, and really, some of those gap students, the students that, that never could qualify for Pell, but didn't quite qualify for anything else. And that, that middle of the road student really, this opportunity for them is amazing. And, and getting that word out about it as, a, as that kind of a scholarship is gonna be really important for all of us whose boots are on the ground, working with these students every day. And like Wendy said, um, using creativity and, and really putting the big push on that FAFSA completion rate is gonna go a long way um, in making that happen. So. Uh, we are very excited to be involved in it, and we're excited about um, the work in front of us. So thank you very much for having me today. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Wendy, Ryan, Governor Whitmer, and Tina for co-hosting today. And thank you for Chad for being here. I am Janine Hatoum, and I serve as the Director of High School Innovation at MCAN. We are so glad that you could spend part of your day with us. For the remainder of our time together, we'll be hearing details about this awesome opportunity with Chad from the Department of Treasury, and we will also have school-based staff here to share some of their strategies that have proven to be effective. Uh, we do have representation from all over the state, from Utica schools at Sterling Heights Stevenson, Montague, Bad Axe, Bad Axe and Detroit Cast Tech. At any point, if you have questions, please use the Q&A function as the chat function has been disabled due to how many people have joined us. We will answer them through the Q&A and also if we have time at the end, we will honor that with some of your questions live. So to kick us off, let's hear about this Michigan Achievement Scholarship from Chad. OK, 
Okay. Thank you, Janine, um, and uh, welcome everyone. And thank you to MCAN. Um, my name is Chad Somerville, and I am the Outreach Manager for the Michigan Department of Treasury's My Student Aid Team. Um, today, I will be providing information on the Michigan Achievement Scholarship eligibility requirements, resources available for our counselors and high school stakeholders, and important reminders on how counselors and college advisors can gain access to very critical and important information related to their eligible students in their school. Um, so let's get started with the program overview. Okay, so students who graduate from high school in Michigan with a diploma, certificate of completion, or an achieved or achieved a uh, high school equivalency certificate in 2023 or after will be eligible for up to $2,750 at a community college or a tribal college. This is per year and up to three years. Um, if students attend a Michigan four-year public university, um, they are eligible for up to $5,500 per year, and that's up to five years. And for students who attend private colleges and universities, they are eligible for up to $4,000 per year for up to five years. All right, just to cover some basic eligibility requirements, um, the FAFSA really is the driver to all of this. I cannot stress how important this step is. Without a FAFSA on file, students simply cannot be considered for the Michigan Achievement Scholarship. Um, students must have a, an expected family contribution, also known as an EFC, of $25,000 or less. Um, and this number is generated by way of completing the FAFSA. So again, um, a major driver in this whole process. Uh, students must be re Michigan residents. They must graduate from a Michigan high school or its equivalent in 2023 or after. Um, they must enroll full-time as defined by the eligible institution. And students must enroll within 15 months of high school graduation or its recognized equivalent. Also, students cannot be incarcerated or in default on any federal student loans. Okay, so now I'm going to touch on the MySSG data management system that we um, operate and kind of handle over here at Treasury. Um, again, it's called the MySSG uh, data management system. And what this system does is provide uh, those who have access um, access to student records, FAFSA completion data um, for students in their school so they can check in the system to see which students have or have not completed the FAFSA. Um, counselors or those with access will have access to check on TIP qualifying students, so our students in Michigan who qualify for the tuition incentive program, and also um, it'll give access uh, for any student that qualifies for Michigan Competitive Scholarship. Last but not least, um, Michigan Achievement Scholarship qualifying students. So the MySSG system now has um, unique features within it that allow counselors or anybody who has access to identify students that meet the EFC requirement um, so that they um, can provide some outreach to those uh, specific students. And as you can see on the slide, there is an example of a, a letter that's available for those who have access to the system. Uh, to provide directly to their students. All right, so uh, an important part of this process is requesting access to MySSG. So um, those who are interested in, get, in gaining access must complete what's called a data use agreement, also known as a DUA. Um, this is completed electronically and annually, so it has to be done every year to gain access each year. Um, for those who do have access, we consider those um, individuals data, receive, data receiver designees. Uh, those would include your high school counselors, your college advisors, and high school staff um, placed directly in the schools um, that are focusing on college access and um, post-secondary. Uh, these need to be signed and submitted via um, email to our mystudentaid at michigan.gov email address by the authorizing principal and superintendent. So it is required that this principal and superintendent uh, sends it directly to that, that email box um, from, from that individual. 
And the DUA can be accessed at michigan.gov forward slash MySSG. All right, just to give you a, some insight on some of the communications that are coming from our office and some of the things that we're doing, uh, we do have ongoing webinars. Um, I will share some information on that here in the next coming slides. Um, we are also, um, we, we have actually put together a digital toolkit for our partners and stakeholders. And I will also be touching on that a little bit to, to let you know exactly what that entails. Obviously our website, that's an important part of our communication. Um, that's where you're gonna find most, all of your information regarding the Michigan Achievement Scholarship, you know, with eligibility requirements, toolkit, fact sheets, um, et cetera. Uh, we have social media channels and platforms that we have at My Student Aid. Uh, we're constantly pushing out information on the Michigan Achievement Scholarship, and we encourage you to like or follow us or share any of the content that we're putting out. Um, and then we're also doing in-person and virtual events. So our hardworking outreach staff is um, really doing a lot of grassroots, roots, boots on the ground effort, working closely with the high school counselors in Michigan uh, to push this information, to train all of you on the system that have access to the system. A lot of those efforts are happening. Um, and then we have um, frequently asked questions on our website too that are constantly being updated and meeting the needs of our customers. Okay, as I mentioned, we're doing some webinars. So high school students and families interested in learning more about the scholarship are encouraged to definitely register. So um, matter of fact, they're kicking off this week. So um, tonight at 6.30 p.m., we will be kicking off our first Michigan Achievement Scholarship Evening Webinar uh, at 6.30. And then we'll also be doing one Thursday, January 26th at 6.30. Uh, so anyone that wants to gather information on eligibility requirements, award amounts, important action items, um, we'll be covering um, FAFSA completion and just diving into, you know, the, the things that are necessary and required when completing a FAFSA, um, and then additional resources. Um, all of these are free of charge, open to the public. There are more dates coming um, in February, March, April, and May. We'll be releasing those dates very soon, um, but we encourage you to um, spread this to your students and families out there that uh, in, you know, in your schools and registration is available at michigan.gov forward slash achievement. So um, we definitely encourage you to spread the word on, on those efforts going on. And also we have webinars for most of you that are on uh, today's webinar. So high school counselors, college advisors, um, any of our high school stakeholders out there, you're all encouraged to attend. Um, we're going to, going to be doing some informational webinars on Valentine's Day. So Tuesday, February um, 14th at 10 a.m. And then we'll also have an afternoon session at 1.30 p.m. Um, you only need to attend one. We were just wanting to um, provide multiple sessions to offer more flexibility. Um, in those sessions, we'll be covering general eligibility requirements, award amounts, um, all of the resources available in the MySSG system uh, to, to help support your qualifying students. And one thing that we're going to do in those as well is provide a live demonstration of the MySSG High School uh, Counselor Portal to allow folks that do have access um, just a, a better understanding of the basic navigation that goes within the system. Sketch credit will be available for attendees and the registration is available at our website the uh, Michigan Achievement Scholarship website, which is michigan.gov forward slash achievement. All right, and as I mentioned earlier, we do have a digital toolkit, uh, toolkit in place. Um, and really what this is for is all of our partners and stakeholders um, to help spread the word about the Michigan Achievement Scholarship really through consistent messaging and branding. So the toolkit, um, it really includes a brand guide. It includes sample social media graphics that you can use, uh, social media messages, hashtags that you can use so you don't have to recreate the wheel or anything like that. Um, email blast language, if you want, you know, if you're doing any type of messaging or newsletters to your students and families at your schools, we have that on the toolkit. And then we have some one page flyers too that you can, uh, print, download, and provide. Um, all of this, again, is available at michigan.gov forward slash achievement. 
and then be the first to know. So if you want to sign up to be a part of our listserv and receive important updates and information regarding the Michigan Achievement Scholarship, the QR code is here on this um, page. So I encourage you to download that. Um, you can also find the link to um, sign up on the michigan.gov forward slash achievement website. Um, but important that you're, you know, in the loop in, in receiving all of our communication and um, important updates. So if you have questions beyond today's webinar, you can certainly visit our website at michigan.gov forward slash achievement. You can email us at mystudentaid at michigan.gov, or you can call our helpful customer care center at 1-888-447-2687, and we would be happy to assist, answer any questions that you have. Um, at this point, I'm going to hand it off, but thank you so much for attending. Thank you, Chad, and thank you for your entire team. I know they're on here helping field some of these questions. Thank you for all of your support. I know some of the questions have been answered, but we hope that we'll have some time at the end to answer any additional questions um, that you might have. So here we are moving into our panel part of the agenda today. We are so excited to have school-based staff here on the ground, really doing some great work. Uh, we have Christy Becker, a school counselor from Sterling Heights Stevenson, Grace Cool, an advised Michigan college advisor at Montague High School with her partner, Rob Patton, who is a school counselor there as well. We have Lisa Phillips, principal of Cass Tech High School in Detroit, and Rebecca Roganbuck, school, college, and career counselor at Bad Axe High School. So a lot of these schools have had great success and are even improving this year. So we are excited to learn more from them. So let's start with Principal Phillips from Detroit Cass Tech, one of the largest high schools in Detroit serving over 2,400 students. Cass Tech is one of the bigger schools, uh, Principal Phillips, but you are one of the top performers or in FAFSA completion. What has been your vision and what are some strategies that you've seen as being successful? Well, good afternoon, everyone. And I am truly proud to be here. I was asked to um, work, what are we doing to inspire students to complete the, the FAFSA through leadership? So I started thinking, I was listening to everything that was going on with the uh, senior parent night. But the one thing that we do that I'm extremely proud of and I am a part of, we have what's called FAFSA Fridays, where 12th grade students each and every Friday, the English teachers set aside about 20 minutes to work with our students, teaching them about the PIN number and password and the importance of completing it and giving extra credit. I start talking about the process with our students in the eighth grade during our eighth grade orientation. We continue the conversation over and over for four years. After four years, when it's time to complete the application during their senior year, they are quite familiar and comfortable with the process. We also offer incentives to our counselors. The more students you have to complete, the better and bigger the incentives are. We also monitor quite frequently. I meet with our um, transitional advisor. We have what's called um, Warrior Thursday, where we meet with financial assistance from uh, Wayne State University to work with our students. Um, we have what's called, and I've already heard, the senior parent meeting night and financial aid night. But once the uh, presentations are over, we set aside 40 to maybe 60 minutes to work with parents one-on-one, -on -one, and it really helps. If you are a parent and you missed any of our presentations, we also have meetings for those parents. We do use the MISH SSG portal. It's very important that we follow that. We also are involved in all of your webinars. We give extra credit. We talk to our parents at the PTSA, and it's truly helpful. But we make it truly a competition at Cass Technical High School. Right now, out of 579 seniors, 300 have qualified. So we're working like weekly. What's going on? What are you doing? We also, well, I'm just going to be honest, we have the dance, free dress day, and different incentives that we do provide. But we talk about the importance of finance. 
going to college, your purpose for coming to high school, if you're going to college is to leave and go and matriculate on to college without paying fees, scholarships, and of course, this wonderful uh, FAFSA. So we just talk about it and we keep this in front of our students, posters around the school. We have a great transitional advisor and she meets with students to interpret the student aid report, uh, especially with our parents to understand if you do this correctly, you will be happy in the end. So basically our counselors, our transitional advisors, the English department, myself and um, parents, we push this initiative and we're quite successful. We do monitor weekly. We monitor weekly uh, the outcomes of what's going on with um, our process. Thank you, Principal Phillips. I think you gave me like one minute, so I didn't want to go over. <laughs> no, that's great. You, you did a great job highlighting some important pieces. Next, Christy from another large high school at Sterling Heights Stevenson with one of the highest FAFSA completion rates, what has contributed to your success? Hi, thank you. Um, so our principal, Kenneth Cookie, had a vision on how we as a counseling department could better implement and support all things post-secondary. We took his vision and ran with it. One of the contributions to the success of our FAFSA completion rate at Sterling Heights Stevenson High School was the implementation of the college lunch series, which was during each lunch period for approximately the first 10 weeks daily and then sporadically twice a week um, for quarter to the second 10 weeks of school. So the seniors, what they would do for the college lunch series would grab their lunch and join us in the media center. Sessions included the college application, question and answer, essay support, and help with FAFSA completion. Another contribution to our success with the Stevenson High School seniors was visiting the senior English classrooms. The in-person face-to-face -face connection has been invaluable. A huge reason also is that we have been more successful because we are a cohesive department. Um, we know the importance and recognize the importance of what we are doing, and we know how to divide and conquer to get the job done. Thank you, Christy. Two schools have brought up English teachers. So if there's any English teachers on this call right now, they're <laughs> going to be thrilled. Um, in contrast, we're going to move to a more rural areas. Grace and Rob, what have been some of your strategies or your challenges and, and strategies to address them? The biggest challenge we have faced is students not receiving information or help in a way that works best for them. With that being said, we've prioritized relationship building. We have strong relationships with all of the senior students. Sometimes all students need is a classroom visit, in which we do often visit the English classrooms. But most, student, most students need the one-on-one -on -one help. They need to be handheld through parts of the process. There's been um, gaps in information that need to be closed. Like Chrissy mentioned, we also leverage senior classes to ensure students hear about important deadlines so they don't miss out on scholarship opportunities. They don't always read emails, rarely ever do, or check Google Classroom. Our personal finance class has also been a huge help when we've been able to help students file with our support. Grace mentioned uh, relationships and um, we do put a real primary focus on that. A lot of times students and families uh, perceive there being barriers in front of them or have anxieties around the process. Little things like walking into an office and do I feel comfortable in that space? Who am I going to encounter? I don't want to go in first, you go in first, all of these things. And so we make a real uh, attempt to be visible to all students, uh, to demonstrate unconditional positive regard. We take a really a customer service approach to this. Um, sometimes it's hard to link families to help that is very much available. And I feel like FAFSA is one of those things. We've got a lot of resources around FAFSA, a lot of opportunities to support the process, but still bringing those families to the table can be a real challenge. So we find that it is really helpful to us to simply be someone that kids are comfortable being around. And then that really supports the rest of the process. And then with teacher support, we're able to close that whole circle around them. 
Thank you to both of you. I love that customer service approach. Rebecca, coming from a mid-sized high school, do you have any strategies that you'd like to highlight that's worked for you all? Is Rebecca on? Maybe your volume's down, Rebecca. Nope. Nope, we can't we can't hear you. We can come back to you. Yep, let's come back to you. Um Let's shift into thinking through how the um, new Michigan Achievement Scholarship has potentially impacted your FAFSA completion. So given that this is something new this year, how has that impacted your FAFSA completion? Um, let's start with Grace and Rob on that one. So this year we have focused on helping students individually. Information when it is specific, to the student is a game changer for them. They can actually see how the scholarship can open doors they thought were closed. We have still been very intentional, intentional with our TIP eligible students and check in on their progress, but this scholarship affects many more students than just that. I'm constantly talking about the Michigan Achievement Scholarship. I talked with a group of teachers today at lunch and they hadn't heard about it and it's a awesome opportunity and they went back excited to tell their classes, even though I've already told the seniors, but they were still excited. I've hung posters, sent emails to students and parents, and most important, I met with students whose college has become now more affordable for them. Anytime you get an opportunity to create another buzz around a certain issue, uh, it's an opportunity worth taking, and that's something that's happened with the Michigan Achievement Scholarship. We're able to um, I announced that as yet another new thing and then link it back to the FAFSA and just reinforce the common language that we're working with with students, you know, the basic vocabulary terms around the FAFSA and now we've added Michigan Achievement Scholarship. And so you are able to uh, capitalize on your previous efforts by announcing this new effort and creating some new excitement with students. And so students who previously maybe had kind of uh, started to lose traction in the process we can re-engage them with this new opportunity and they wonder how it might impact them. Um, so uh, we're always looking for a new way to approach uh, the same effort. And uh, our effort is to increase FAFSA completion. Um, but the Michigan Achievement Scholarship is um, a new buzz for our students that really is open to so many students at a variety of grade levels. So we're using that announcement to invest in not just our seniors, but our also our uh, lower grade levels to hopefully see even greater success as they become seniors. Yeah, thank you. And Montague, congrats on your, um, you're up 40% with FAFSA completion from this time last year. So obviously it's working. So kudos to you. Um, Rebecca, are you on now? Nope, still can't hear you. Yeah. We'll go to Christy first. Christy, anything to add? Hello. Yes, I'm back. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say that, you know, we're always, um, it always seems like sometimes we're adding more and, and trying to get students, you know, on board with things and how, what can we provide to motivate them. It's so nice that the state has this carrot that the, like the, the state has the money. And, you know, we say, we tell students, you know, co complete this FAFSA so you know you, you will have this money because we, we have, you know, all the all the data and the information that we need. So it's just nice that the state is actually providing that carrot. And we're not here trying to figure out ways to motivate our students to get the job done, because that in itself sometimes is it, it, it's a, a, a job in itself. It is. Thank you. Rebecca, we're going to try you one more time.
No, can you try unmuting? There you go. Yep. How did that work for you? Great. Good. Good. <laughs> um, yeah. So just um, to kind of recap what some people have already hit on, um, the personal relationships with students and parents is huge. Um, one thing that we're very fortunate, we have a full-time school counselor in our office, as well as um, myself full-time, who does the college and career piece at Bad X. Um, we have approximately about 80 seniors at, um, at our school, and it allows me to have a lot of personal interactions, whether that's um, individual student conversations throughout the day, or working with parents outside of, you know, traditional school hours, whether that's before work, after work for parents, um, that's, that's something that I've been able to offer um, and has really, really worked well because I know a lot of us um, see it in our schools that students are able to complete their part of the FAFSA. However, they, have, they struggle getting that parent to um, sit down and, and finish up their portion. So being available for those parents has been a huge part of um, helping with our completion rate and, and building those relationships to um, have positive interactions and, and really kind of um, help to make everything make a little bit more sense. Because for us who do FAFs every day, it's, it's fairly straightforward. But when you're going through it the first time, it is a very confusing process. Thank you for that. I think what we've heard over and over again from all of our panelists is the importance of this one-to-one -one interaction with students and families. So um, that was highlighted multiple times. Again, also support from senior teachers as well. Does any la panelists have any last minute strategies or takeaways that you wanna share with our guests? I, I wanted to share something. Yeah. Uh, Lisa Phillips, um, it's important that we keep this at the forefront of all junior class meetings with the juniors because our juniors are coming to me now. Hey, how can I get ahead of the game? What can I do? And I, I'm telling them, let's get your autobiographical sketch ready. Let's get your recommendations ready. Let's make sure that you are, you know how to complete the FAFSA. Also at graduation, I recognize all of the students in, uh, collectively who've completed. And when I give the amount, the parents are excited. So they send the word back to the uh, younger students, hey, you, she'll talk about you during graduation and your successes. And I also include this as a part of my graduation um, send off for our students. So I just keep the word out whenever I have a venue, a large venue of uh, people uh, dealing with our students, you talk about it and parents will uh, gravitate and it makes it quite successful. Thank you. That's a great point, uh, Principal Phillips. When you think about all of the money that students get, it, it, it does lead to an increase in the scholarship dollars awarded for the school to be able to kind of toot their own horn about increase in scholarships for all their students. So that is a great point. Um, so what you're seeing here is are things that have been highlighted, but really thinking about number one, we just need students and families to file their FAFSA. That is a key to, to making sure that they are all have access to this wonderful scholarship opportunity. Um, after that, the students will create the um, MISSG student portal account three to five business days after filing the FAFSA. This is not required, but it is encouraged. Um, and just a note on that, that the eligibility status isn't yet available, but you, um, if you sign up for their updates where it said, be the first to know, that will be information that you will get. Um, I think Principal Phillips mentioned monitoring weekly um, data. So that is really critical. You don't know what you're not tracking, right? So um, we have supported you through our FAFSA, Michigan FAFSA tracker, but a lot of you have internal data tracking systems. That um, MISSG portal, also the counselor portal is also a great way to track this and to identify specific students who need to file. 
Uh, we did hear a lot about the senior teachers, especially the English teachers who um, have supported this effort. It is an all hands on deck approach. Uh, this is important. Counselors cannot do it all. Advisors cannot do it all. So this is very critical uh, to support. And then making sure that there are after hours. I know Rebecca mentioned just being available um, weekends and after hours to really um, make sure that we can get to families when they are available. And I know all of you, a lot of you do that as well. And some schools have mentioned that they have a senior exit checklist that includes FAFSA or FAFSA completion or waiver as an expectation. And some of the panelists had mentioned um, incentives for this, uh, free tickets to dances, et cetera. So part of that senior exit checklist is a great way to make sure that seniors have all the things that they need in order to graduate and, and to move forward. Um, so thank you to all of our panelists for, for great the great work that you're doing and for sharing your strategies with us. Now, moving forward, we have resources that we want to share with all of you, and we want to make sure that you have the support that you need to do this work. First, you should have all received an awesome, exciting box, a delivery that is um, to the counseling department. So if you haven't gotten it yet, it should be somewhere in the school, and it has these fun pamphlets for every senior um, saying, let's get this bread. So they should know what that means. And we should too. I hope you do. So we are excited about this. It has um, a micro site that promotes this scholarship to students and families. It's getmimoney.org. This is also a sticker. So the kids will have fun with this as well. In that box is also a letter for counselors and it will have this QR code. The QR code has access to um, scholarship one pagers and FAQ slides for families, um, an editable, editable student meeting invitation if you're going to have student one-on-ones or small group sessions. And all of that is, is ongoing. So we will continue to add resources for you. Um, and you can feel free to edit some of these as well to fit your needs. There is a tiny URL ex um, as well. So you have access. Not everything will be in there yet as we're consist consistently making sure to address your needs and add to it. I did mention data tracking. Part of that is with our Michigan FAFSA tracker. We do send you weekly updates on your growth um, every week. The principals, school leaders should be getting that. If you would like to receive those as a school counselor, you also can. There is a way to, when you go to your school profile, you can add your, your email and subscribe and you will get those. I can also help you with that and my contact information will be at the end. Um, we do in our counselor listserv, we have over 900 school-based counselors, advisors, et cetera, that we share really great resources with. And we do shout outs and strategy highlights on Fridays for all of them. And we also wanna highlight some of our partner resources. Big Future has a scholarship for FAFSA completion. It's a step in the college process. If you go to Big Future at College Board, you will see this. It's a way for students who have filed the FAFSA to be eligible for an additional big scholarship through the college board, just simply for filing their FAFSA. Um, we did hear about um, the resources at MI Student Aid. And of course, you can always go to that website and to the uh, Michigan Achievement, miachievement.org for additional resources. Um, what we do at MCAN, we are really proud that we can support you in this work. A lot of you have taken advantage of our College Bound Michigan um, grant, and that offers schools up to $1,000 to do some of this work, to work with families and students to complete FAFSA, to do some incentives, to make sure to provide opportunities for all students to have this time. Um, you must be a College Bound Michigan site to have access to this grant. If you don't know if you are a, a College Bound Michigan site, 
You probably aren't, but you can also register for um, to be a site on our website and the link is there. You will get all of this as well um, at the conclusion of the webinar. We do wanna highlight, you heard from Grace earlier. Grace is one of our college advisors through the AmeriCorps program. Um, it is a full-time member and these people are wonderful additions to schools, really supporting the school counseling team um, to make sure that there is support in the college and application and, and a planning process. So if you're interested in that, you can also email and we will set up a time to chat. It's a great opportunity to add some support to your department and your school community. We do offer high school innovation grants. We just selected our first group of 10 schools. We are really excited about some of whom are on the call. Um, there, this is up to $25,000 to really rethink school-wide systems around post-secondary access and success. We will reopen this for an additional set of schools. So keep that in mind for the future. Um, we did hear about these Valentine's Day webinars for you. Again, this is February 14th. You will um, get sketch credit and this will be on sent to you and also on the website through Michigan Department um, MI Student Aid. So we did mention that you do have um, one sketch available for today's. So if you did not request a sketch when you originally registered, but you're here attending live, just email sketch at micollegeaccess.org with your name, the name of this webinar, which is listed call to action, the Michigan Achievement Scholarship and FAFSA completion, and your PIC, your PIC. If you are watching this webinar as a recording, you may complete the quiz linked on our website to earn your sketch. You, you have to make sure to use the password call to action, and we will make sure you get that access to the quiz as well. If you're watching live, please note that you do not need to take this quiz. You simply, um, you simply um, will find, if you registered with the asking for a sketch, you will automatically get that information. And I wanted to make sure you had our contact information. So we have um, Ryan's email, my email, and Chad's. Uh, so if you have any questions or you want to follow up on anything I just mentioned, please make sure to email us. We will be happy to um, speak to you. And I'm excited that we have a few minutes for some questions. So if there are any questions that haven't been answered or that we need to maybe re-emphasize or repeat, um, we'll take the time to do that now. And I think Jamie is going to work with that. Also, if you would have a question and would like to be um, ask your question live, we can unmute you so you can do that. So any questions? Thanks, Janine. I do see. So we have answered actively over 60 questions. Keep putting those into the Q&A. We'll also take them live, as Janine said. Uh, one person does have their hand up. Erica Lopez, did you have a question? I'm um, unmuting you now. Erica, if you did have a question, you may not, but oh. if you did have a question, oh, there. I do, I am. I pushed on mute twice, I guess. <laughs> I pushed it two times. Um, hi, I have a question um, about the materials. So I know that I, you guys were wonderful at answering my questions in the chat. Um, I work for a college access program for Latinx students in the state of Michigan. I'm wondering when those materials will be available into Spanish so that we can promote them in the Latinx community in Michigan, which there's a significant proportion. 
Uh, I have a couple of responses and then I'm going to ping Chad to respond uh, on what's happening with the My Student Aid materials. Uh, we have, uh, Erica, if you want to reach out to Janine or Ryan, whose email was on that last slide, we can pull that back up here in a second. Uh, we have some of those, as we're calling them, bread mailers that are available to get to you sooner rather than later that do have a Spanish translation on them. So that's something we could get to you immediately. We imagine having materials available in the next month that are translated into Spanish and Arabic. Uh, and we'll make sure to get those out to folks uh, through the Google folder and other mailing mechanisms. Chad, what are some timeline plans for Spanish materials from the state? Yeah, so we um, were just talking about this last week. So uh, we definitely want to offer materials in, in Spanish, at least digitally to start. Um, the ordering process on our end might take a little longer than than usual, um, but at least digitally is what we're thinking. And we're probably thinking along the same timeline that Jamie mentioned um, within the next month or next month. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. I know a lot of us are working with seniors and families, so we would really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thanks, Erica. Great question. Folks are still typing in the chat, which is great, uh, or in the Q&A functionality. Uh, I will wait for any other folks who want to live ask a question with a hand raised. That's a signal to let me know to unmute you. Um, we love questions out loud, so we'd love to take your questions that way as well. If you have not taken a look at the Q&A or you feel that incredibly overwhelming as you're trying to stay attuned to what folks are saying in the slides, we will create a transcript of the question that were asked and responded to and ensure that that's available uh, both in the Google folder and as a follow-up to those attending or those uh, who will be watching a recorded version. So we'll make sure that those are available to folks. All right, Janine, I don't see any other brave folks raising their hands. So uh, I will turn it back over to you. And again, continue to put your questions into the Q&A functionality and email us if you have any that you didn't get asked today. Thank you, Jamie. On behalf of the entire MCAN team, Wendy and MASSP, Sarah and MACAC and Tina at MASA, thank you so much for all that you do and for joining us today. Any last words from our co-hosts? Janine, I'd, I'd love to say something <laughs> as a high school sure. counselor. Um, this has been awesome. Um, it's been, thank you, MCAN, for putting this together and the energy and the creativity of the of my colleagues, um, college um, advising people around the state and, and school counselors. Um, I just want to share one of the things that we're doing. We're, we're really embracing the bread theme from MCAN. And so um, even to our staff in um, in the school. So we're we're going next week to our senior English classes. Those English, English classes certainly do get a lot of um, attention this senior year. But we're going and we're going to get the buzz going about getting your bread. And so my, my office staff will be wearing toast t-shirts. Um, and then my counseling colleagues have, they're choosing between either bread slippers or maybe I might go with the, the bread hat, um, even the bread man. And, um, and last but not least, you showed it. One of my colleagues, he's got his name all over this one. And we're going we're gonna to put a buzz around the school um, next week, just before one of our um, FASFA workshops that our colleague is on um, today. And uh, we're going to make sure they feel it and they hear it and they come and they finish their FAFSA because this really is about meeting the goals for all of our students um, that are interested in post-secondary and showing them that it's possible. So, um, you know, we're, we're going to really hit it hard. And um, it's really about getting that bread and that access to uh, higher ed. So thanks so much for, for doing this today. Thank you. I think we need to end it there. We just all need to go and get some bread. Thank you all for joining. Thanks for our co-hosts. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for all that you do.